It's called love. And that's very special magic indeed. Hey, he fans and she ravers, got another Masters of the Universe review for you. This one is for the Super 7 Filmation Club Grayskull Sorceress figure. And they're remaining consistent with how Mattel released these figures. Comes in a, a nice cardboard mailer box, which this is supposed to be the thing that absorbs all of the damage uh, if your box gets smashed around. But these mailer boxes are beautiful too. It's a rare case of the packaging becoming part of the display. And inside is contained this Sorceress figure, which I wanted to mention is also available at Big Bad Toy Store right now. So just like the Filmation He-Man, which I reviewed on the channel some time ago, it has this really beautiful outer slip cover on it. And it slides off nice and smooth. Really makes it feel like a premium figure. It's not just about the action figure. Uh, the, the packaging has a lot to do with the presentation here. Really beautiful boxes. The, uh, the original classics ones, which you see in the background here, are nice, but these Club Grayskull boxes are just gorgeous. Nice huge window. You can see all the accessories that are included. You get Zoar, alternate head, a stand, and I also like these side windows so you can peer through Castle Grayskull. And if that's not enough, there's also holes on the top to allow for some light to come in in case you have, as most rooms do, overhead lighting. So if you want to keep this mint in box, get some really uh, nice display options there. And then beautiful artwork, filmation artwork on the back. It's a still capture from the intro right before the sorceress transforms. And a little bio here telling you the history of the sorceress. And my favorite part about the packaging is that it is resealable. So unlike the bubble style packaging that at best you can cut it open and maybe tape it back up. You can take your sorceress figure out, display it for a while, who knows, maybe a year later. You pop it back in, you seal it all back up. And it's almost like you've got another mint in box one. And it comes on a clamshell with the wings taped to the bottom some extra sticky tape. Check out the care um, given in this packaging. This is what really makes these seem like adult collector figures. I mean, kids can play with them, but the extra care taken uh, because they know people don't like paint being scuffed, um, stuff being damaged during shipping. Just going to the uh, making the extra effort of packaging these different wing options in little plastic baggies is really thoughtful and greatly appreciated. So the sorceress comes secured in her bubble with this uh, little wire holding her in place. And even once the wire is removed, she's, she's not going anywhere. So again, extra care. And speaking of extra care, she even has these little clear elastics holding her feet in place. And I like to use these for um, like bow and arrow type of toys. If you've got uh, the She-Ra bow figure, this is great for his bow since that one didn't actually come with the wire. So we pull the sorceress out. Here's the stand. And spare head. And Zoar. Okay, we're gonna start off with Zoar, which is the falcon form of the sorceress. And check out these little teeny tiny holes in the feet of the falcon. 
and tiny little pegs in the stand. So unlike the original Zoar, which is always falling off the stand for me, you can actually secure this thing not just with the falcon's claws, but by pushing those little holes. And it might be a pretty tight fit. Those are teeny tiny. Those are um, smaller than G.I. Joe foot pegs. It's more like the mask size foot pegs and it almost seems like they're too small to uh, to fit. Just trying to maybe loosen up this thing a little bit. So it's not exactly a quick easy easy fit for that but it's kind of not even needed. I guess if I uh, I apply enough pressure it'll it'll go in there but he stands on there actually just pretty easily uh, a little off to the side or she I should say I'm still thinking about the original incarnation of Zoar which was intended to be a totally different character from the sorceress but when filmation came aboard they decided that this would be the alternate form of the Sorceress of Grayskull and really nice I mean it's it's not all that complicated a paint job on it but it's very nicely done nice bright orange looks like I got some good paint on the eyes no wonky eyes on this one so that's a really great little accessory and it's almost a uh, requirement for any sorceress figure to also include a little bonus Zoar figure. So then we have the main sorceress figure who doesn't look quite right at the moment because we haven't put her wings on. So she's got two options for her wings. And I guess we should remove Zoar because two of them can't be in the same place at the same time, right? So let's start off with the collapsed wings, which I see a big peg on the back here and two smaller ones on the side here. And we see a backpack hole, G.I. Joe style. And then she's got the two smaller ones on her arms too. So we just fit this one in here and secure the wings into her forearms. I really like these hands. I'll go in depth on uh, the sculpting of the actual figure in a second. And rotate that a little bit. And we'll see if we can secure that a little bit more. This is a really floppy plastic. So I don't know if it's the same type of plastic as the forearms it's trying to connect to. This one seemed to connect pretty well. This other one is, the size is a little different, so you need to um, twist a little bit. And it doesn't look like it's going in all that smoothly. That's just a little nip with an X-Acto knife. Should be able to fix that. So you, that, that's a great looking pose, very powerful. With, especially with the hands in, uh, in ready position. She looks like she's just about ready to cast a spell on Skeletor and his evil henchmen. And I don't think you um, even need to worry about the, the pegs. That's just a nice little bonus, but it restricts her hands, so... If you detach them, then you've got a little bit more of a natural uh, posing option available. All right, let's take a look at some of the finer details on the figure. Really beautiful head sculpt. I lucked out again. There's uh, no wonky eyes on here, and this one's double trouble because you got two sets of eyes and. Really nice. Again, not all that complicated. There's no wash 
on it detailing, but very lovely. And for the rest of the body, uh, the hands are different from the classics version. There are these um, kind of gripping hands, but they're in this like casting spell pose. I think I've seen these on some of the Shira figures. Uh, but having them both like that just makes her look like someone you don't want to mess with. Really like those. And then a very basic but nice paint job on the boots too. Um, and the legs are not shiny as they normally are on these figures. It almost looks like she's wearing nylons. So let's take off this set of wings and see what she looks like with the big wings attached. So once again, the big hole goes in the back. And that feels pretty secure. It's heavy, but it's, it's holding. You don't want to shake it, but it's holding pretty well. And then again, there's smaller pegs on the sides, which plug into the forearms, and that one plugs in perfectly. And luckily there's tons of articulation in the body. It's the same articulation as any classic or um, Club Grayskull figure. Um, so it shouldn't be that difficult to turn this arm here. This was the same arm that wasn't fitting in the last one. And kind of the same deal here. I wonder if I need to drill that hole a little bit. Yeah, I think I need to drill that hole uh, a little bit wider or try to cut it a little bit wider. But there she is with her wingspan fully extended. And that looks great too. Wow. That's really cool. So the wings on the original, uh, well, classics version, which I'll bring out in a minute, uh, were collapsible. Uh, this one is especially nice because it doesn't have those moving parts on it. So you just get this one nice, solid, unbroken up piece. And that's really cool. Once again, very powerful looking. Love it. Uh, she stands pretty good, by the way. She's got the same issue as any classics figure. Uh, Club Grayskull figure, one pretty tight ankle, one really loose ankle, which you can use some glue or nail polish or um, clear canopy glue uh, on that. So let's drop her hands down and see what she looks like. Hmm, that's interesting. I was, I was thinking of displaying her like this, but the open wings don't really work if the hands are down. That's funny. I, I didn't think I would prefer um, this one on this figure, but this one's pretty much stuck with her arms up if you want to display these wings. So I think I'll pop the original one back on and just have her at the ready. So let's take a look at the alternate head that was included before we start doing some comparisons. And this one, like the one that's on the figure right now, has this really floppy material, which is nice. It's not going to scratch up your paint on the body as you move the head around. There's a lot of contact being made there. Uh, this particular head, different style. And let's see how easy it is to pop the head off. Awesome, that was easy. It's always a fear, um, a concern, especially with the female figures because their neck, neck pegs are much smaller, uh, thinner than the male bodies of uh, breaking those. So, let me just see how easy it is to pop the other one on. Awesome. And I believe this is the head of the sorceress before the sorceress. The one that passed the uh, the power of Grayskull onto 
the uh, sorceress we all know and love. So if you had the original sorceress and you thought, well, why bother getting another one? Yeah, it's a filmation version, but I'm good with the original. Uh, you could have this be a completely separate character and just uh, use this as the previous sorceress. So that's a cool little bonus whenever they include an extra head that basically allows you to make your figure a totally separate character. And I just googled it and this is indeed the head of Kodak Ungle, the original sorceress on the filmation episode uh, which went into the origin of the sorceress. Okay, on to some comparisons here. We'll bring out the uh, filmation Zoar again and I was able to get one of the talons on there off screen uh, just by holding it quite close and trying to do this twisting in action and once you get one you can't really do that with the other one because the other one the first one that you got in will come loose so you can sort of get one in and he's in there super secure now he's not coming out one's enough but there she again sorry I keep doing that so or to me is just such a uh, a male character just based on the mini comics since it was Falcon was rarely called Zoar uh, on the show and for comparison here is the Club Grace called Zoar with the original Zoar and the original one is much bigger way bigger than um, it should have been but uh, it was a reused eagle mold from um, another toy line was it Lone Ranger or, or Zorro? I'm not sure, but I think it was a mold that Mattel reused from another toy line. Uh, same coloration, but the original Zoar is much shinier on the blue parts. But they've stayed true to the original painting, and uh, the stand on the new one is a lot more simplified. There's a lot more detail on the original stand. And this Zoar doesn't come with the battle harness. And the Filmation Zoar with the Masters of the Universe Classics Zoar, which came with the original Classics Sorceress figure. And again, there's no battle harness on the Filmation version. The Classics version has one, which is e easily removed the purpose of comparison we'll take that off uh, this Falcon the wings are glued on but they don't move it's just to give the illusion that it's something that could move and the wings on this Zoar do actually go up and down so there's there's a lot more posability two points of articulation with this Zoar and this one seems bigger this one has a lot more detail though when you take a closer look you see especially on the wings there's this um, gradient going from a light orange to a reddish orange on there and even some wash on here I believe it was intentional you see some blue through the uh, feathering and there's feathering detail so a lot more detail even feathering detail underneath so this one looks more like a cartoon this one definitely looks more like a real falcon. And then a lot more detail on the classics version stand, which is intended to look more like the original toy. And finally, the comparison that I've been wanting to do since I picked up this uh, classics sorceress to see how these two look side by side. Now, over the last couple of years, the price tag on this one has gone up quite a bit. And it's really a shame because she's an important character and I just think that really sucks when a lot of people aren't able to get such an important character um, for whatever reason she is more rare than a lot of the other classics figures so when they announced this one I thought well that's awesome now people can get their sorceress they changed it up so that the people who have the original one don't feel as though um, 
it's been mass produced again and it'll decrease in value but I was really interested to see how these two measure up and even though I really have liked this one putting it beside this new one uh, makes this one not look good anymore <laughs> it is it is really paling in comparison to this filmation figure for me and this is just one of those things that you can stare at pictures for days and think one thing but when you actually get them side by side in front of you with your own eyes that's when you really can tell what your preference is and I think this one just looks fantastic so the blues on the original sorceress seem darker Definitely lighter on the new one and not baby blue like on the original one. The head sculpt is so much better, I think. And I'm not just talking about paint quality, but just the look. Just the look of it. There's a little bit more, like with Zoar, there's more detail in the feathers and in the dress. So that's a little bit missed. Uh, and in the, the boots. The fur detail in the boots. And of course there's no staff with this one. And this one can't even hold a staff. But I do love the hands, the um, spell casting hands. Whereas on this one, it's got a hand to hold a staff, but the other hand uh, holding what? Nothing. I guess you could pose her to be holding her uh, her staff with both hands, but that's very limiting. It's making the figure always hold the staff, unless she just has a, an empty hand there. So with the wings on the original one, they did collapse. We'll pull this out for a second, and this material is a much harder material. It's got a little bend in it, but if you can just hear it. It's a harder plastic that sounds like it's going to break if you push it too much. And they've always had issues with um, pulling them out. They're on some kind of leveled system back here. So it looks fairly nice when it's all behind her like that. But you can just see it's like kibble. It's like Transformers kibble in behind her. And on the new Filmation version, all you got to do is just pop that off, pop this one on, and it looks so much cleaner. So that's also a definite improvement in my opinion. And a major advantage that the Filmation version has over the classics is that the wings can't come off on the classics version. Best you can do is move the arms up and move these segments out of the way. But this one is stuck. It's glued in there. And even the chair in the classics gray skull, it has a hole in it so that that will slip into it, which is kind of silly. And this skirt material is kind of rigid, so she can't sit well anyway. This is the sorceress and she's supposed to be able to sit in Castle Gray Skull, and this figure can't do it. This one you just pop the wings off very easily and she still can't sit perfectly but the skirt material is a lot more rubbery so she uh, has an easier time. Wow, those are like ratchet joints. That's cool. Yeah, great, uh, great grip there. But uh, this one has a much easier time sitting in the throne of Castle Greyskull. And just to show you the difference between the two in the throne, there's that hole that I mentioned that this center wing flap is supposed to feed into. And this is just a really, it's terrible design. Uh, I've never actually tried to fit this sorceress figure in here and it's just terrible. Um, she doesn't have enough bend at the hips 
can sort of get her in there, but then the arms, the wings are still up there. It's just not... It would have to be an improvement to just be not good. Um, but then you take this sorceress and... And... It almost looks like you can fit her hands so that it looks like she's holding on to the throne. So it doesn't have to just be a, um, a spellcasting pose with her hands. So, like I said, the, uh, there's not quite enough range in the hips to, to get a perfect um, seated position, but that looks way better than the Classics version. And it's also nice that it kind of looks like she's holding on to the throne, or you can have one hand holding on and then the other hand casting a spell. And even the sorceress gets tired from time to time, so maybe she wants to take out the Talon Fighter, or just remove Nikolai and Argyle out of here, and have her take the controls here. And she actually fits quite nicely in there. She seems very tiny all by herself in this Talon Fighter. But there you go. Much more efficient than flapping your wings. And there's one more hidden feature which I just discovered and it's not mentioned on the box and I haven't seen it mentioned in any reviews but she's got a button on her back which when you push it <coughs> lets her cast a spell to protect against the forces of Skeletor. So if you missed out on the original classic sorceress You've been trying to hunt one down for a reasonable price for quite some time. This one will cost you a lot less and I actually think this one's nicer than the one that costs all that much. Big thanks to the Patreon tribe for supporting the channel. Hope you're enjoying all of the exclusives on there. And that Snake Eyes silent interlude motion comic from last week was something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. So thanks for all the great feedback on that one. Feel free to leave the most powerful comment in the universe below and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Now I must go. Goodbye and good luck. Nerdmas Day.